Control valves are used as final control elements in a variety of process applications. In control systems, they often serve to control the flow rate of fluids. The control valves you'll be seeing in this program are automatically operated. They are opened, closed, or modulated by air pressure. Other automatically operated valves may be positioned by electricity or hydraulics. We'll be seeing how a variety of different types of control valves work to control the flow of processed fluids. We'll begin with one of the most common types of control valves in use today, the globe valve. It's likely that you'll come across a globe valve in your facility. So let's see how one type of globe valve is constructed and how it works. Globe valves get their name from the globular shape of their bodies. This valve connects to the process piping and serves as the main casing for the internal parts of the device. This valve has a bonnet connected to the valve body. The bonnet contains the stem seal or packing assembly. In between the body and bonnet, there's usually a gasket to seal the connection between the two parts. The actuator responds to the signals from the controller to initiate movement of the parts inside the valve. The actuator provides for the automatic operation of the valve. The stem is connected directly to the actuator and attached to the stem there's a plug. When the globe valve is operating, the stem and plug are moved up and down in response to the movement of the actuator. As the stem and plug move down, the plug approaches the circular seat. When the plug and seat meet, the valve is closed. In this valve, when it is in the closed position, no usable flow passes through the device. When the plug is as far away from the seat as it can go, the valve is at the fully open position. In the fully open position, the maximum amount of processed fluid flows through. Many valves can be positioned at several points in between closed and fully open to provide varying rates of flow through the valve. In a globe valve, the area of the valve opening between the seat and plug determines how much processed fluid can flow through. Now let's look at the parts that guide the movement of the stem when the valve is in operation. The packing assembly is contained in a stuffing box. One part of the packing assembly is the packing material. Packing material helps guide the stem and keeps fluid from leaking out along the stem. Sometimes packing materials are lubricated to reduce friction. A spacer is included in the stuffing box when the needs of the system don't require a stuffing box to be completely filled with packing. The packing flange puts pressure on the packing follower, which compresses the packing material inside the stuffing box. Beneath the packing assembly, the bushing helps guide the stem. So we've seen an example of a common type of valve, the globe valve. Some other designs of globe valves are described in your text. The feature they have in common is a plug attached to a stem that moves linearly in a globular body. This movement controls the flow of fluid through the valve. Most of the maintenance required on a globe valve will center on the seat, the plug, the stem, and the packing that guides the stem. In the next segment, we'll see some maintenance procedures performed on a globe valve. Before we do, stop and review the material in your text. In the last segment, we saw how a globe valve is constructed and how it works to control the flow of processed fluid. In this segment, we'll begin to see how to perform some maintenance procedures on a globe valve. Maintenance on a globe valve is usually required to correct leaks that may have developed during its operation. When a valve is found to have a leak problem, 
It's often overhauled in the shop to repair and replace worn or damaged parts. We're going to see how to perform an overhaul on one type of globe valve. We'll begin with the disassembly of the valve. Since our globe valve is operated by an actuator, the first thing we'll have to do is remove the actuator. Actuators are covered in a later program. The main emphasis here will be on the procedure for removing the actuator from the valve. Let's see how it's done. The technician checks his procedures to see which part of the actuator to remove first. On this valve, we must first remove some accessory parts. He'll start with the dust cover and indicator plates. He used a standard screwdriver to loosen the bolt on the front of the actuator. He uses a holding screwdriver so he can grip the nut behind the bolt without dropping the bolt. Then the first bolt is removed. The bolt on the other side of the dust cover is removed in the same way. There's a screw holding the indicator plate that is loosened. Both the plate and the screw are removed. Then the front dust cover is removed. This procedure is repeated for the back indicator plate and the back dust cover. In order to remove the valve from the actuator, the valve stem must be lowered. This is done by loosening, then lowering the locking nuts. An indicator disc is held in place between the locking nuts. The top nut also locks the stem to the actuator. To free the stem from the actuator, the bottom nut has been lowered. Then the top nut can be turned to release the stem from the actuator. The locking nut is brought down tight to the bottom nut. Now as the technician continues to turn the top nut, he is actually winding the stem down free of the actuator. As you can see, the stem has been lowered from the actuator connector. Our technician is now ready to remove the actuator from the valve body. Since the actuator is heavy, a hoisting mechanism is required to remove it, and a helper is necessary to hold the actuator. It's important to hold the actuator steady because it might sway during hoisting. The technician uses a spanner wrench to loosen the drive nut that connects the actuator to the valve. After the drive nut is loosened with the wrench, he can continue to loosen it with his fingers. This takes a while, so let's move ahead. After the drive nut is loosened, the actuator must be hoisted up slightly so the drive nut can be completely removed. Notice the technician keeps one hand on the hoisting chain as he removes the drive nut. This allows the technician to keep control of the hoist. As the technician continues hoisting to completely lift the actuator off the valve, he takes care to keep the movement steady and straight. It's important that the actuator clears the valve stem without damaging the stem. Scoring or other damage to the stem could affect the operation of the valve. When doing this procedure, remember, some actuators have accessories that must be removed before hoisting the actuator off the control valve. Follow your facility's safety procedures for hoisting and lifting. And make sure that the actuator is lifted straight over the stem to prevent damage to the stem. In the next segment, we'll continue disassembly of our globe valve. For now, stop and review the information in your text.
In the last segment, we began the disassembly by removing the actuator from the valve. Let's rejoin our technician as he continues to disassemble our glove valve. Our technician checks the manufacturer's instructions to familiarize himself with this stage of the disassembly. He'll begin with the actuator indicator disc that's still on the valve stem. The nut holding the indicator disc in place is removed and bagged for safekeeping until we reassemble the valve. The indicator disc is next to be removed and bagged and it's carefully lifted over the stem to avoid doing any damage to the threads. And he removes the lock nut that was underneath the indicator disc and bags it. The next parts to be loosened and removed are the packing flange stud nuts and the packing flange. These parts hold the packing in place. Together, the packing flange studs, the packing flange, and the nuts for the studs serve to compress all the other parts of the packing assembly beneath it. All of the parts that compress the packing assembly have to be removed from the valve so that the stem can be removed from the bonnet assembly. These parts may be rusted or corroded and may require cleaning to remove. The other packing stud nut is removed in the same manner as the first. When removing the packing flange, take care to lift it straight up to avoid the possibility of damage to the threads on the stem. After removing the packing flange, the packing follower is also lifted straight up. The packing follower compresses the packing underneath it. This compression provides a tight seal against leaks. So at this point, our technician has removed several parts in the bonnet that compress the packing and help guide the stem. He's now ready to prepare to remove the bonnet from the body. Let's join him. The technician uses a scribe to make a match mark so that the valve can be reinstalled in the field in its original position. The nuts for the body studs are the next parts to be loosened. These studs and nuts serve to hold the bonnet to the body. The manufacturer suggests a crisscross pattern for loosening these nuts. Following this loosening procedure helps prevent warping and misalignment of the body and bonnet flanges, which might cause the stem to bind and be damaged during the disassembly process. If these studs are badly rusted or corroded, cleaning of these threads may be required to remove them. The crisscross pattern is followed until all eight nuts are loosened. This takes a while, so let's go on. After the technician has loosened the nuts, they can be removed by hand. These nuts are then placed in a plastic bag for safekeeping. The remaining nuts are also removed in bag, so let's move ahead. After the last body stud nut is removed, the technician will be ready to remove the bonnet from the body. The technician gets a firm grip on the bonnet and takes care to lift it straight up so that it doesn't damage any of the body studs. Notice that he's steadying the stem as he lifts off the bonnet. He does this to reduce the possibility of the stem and plug slipping through the bonnet. Remember, since we took all the tension off the packing, there's nothing holding that stem in there very tightly. He takes care to ease the stem out of the bonnet assembly slowly and in a straight line. When you do this, take your time. You don't want to damage the stem in any way. When the stem is clear of the valve body, the technician inspects the stem and plug, looking for any damage such as scoring or bending. Our stem and plug are in good shape. There's no sign of damage. When the stem and plug are in good shape,